Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's segment is going to be Featurism, another portion of Black Male Accountability. Um, now I'm not scrapping the segment completely, but I am going to put it on ice for a little bit. Um, I've been talking to certain people like behind the scenes, potentially may do some collabs with some people. Um, I just got to do thorough background checks because you know I can't just be aligning with just anybody and then come to find out, you know. There were some red flags that I just chose not to look at. You know what I'm saying? You got to be thorough when you align yourself with other people. But got some things in the works. Um, been talking to some people um, and just having conversations in general, well, in general with everything that's going on. Um, I hope Meg Thee Stallion is doing good with her healing. I did want to do a segment on that, but I kind of just want to wait to see how it pans out. I mean, we pretty much know at this point who shot her. We pretty much know. Um, and I do see all the people cracking jokes, and it's disgusting me. It is. And I have also been watching other people's videos on the topic. Um, like I said, I kind of just want to wait till stuff pans out more. But, I mean, you can also, I'm, I'm snapping on Twitter. So, go follow me at Twitter, at B-H-I-T-A-L-I-A-N-O-S. Excuse me. At BH Italianos. Go follow me on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? If I don't do a video, odds are I'm still speaking out about stuff. I'm always seeing stuff. But as far as everything going on in my personal life right now, I'm just kind of pushing back, rearranging time for other stuff. I got some big life decisions that I've been mulling over and a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, if any of y'all have been following me since last year, you will know that or you would know that, you know, I ended up being homeless and, you know, left home and all that other stuff. And it's coming up on what day is it? July 23rd. It's almost been a whole year since I've spoke to my family. So I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm just trying to find a balance with everything right now. And um, at any rate, let's go ahead and get to the video. I just want to let y'all know, even though I don't speak on everything, I see it. So featurism. Definition. Society accepting or preferring certain features over others. Featurism and the comments that come along with them are a form of microaggressions. And microaggressions are actions or words devised to underhandedly insult or put down minorities. Um, microaggressions are closely associated with racism as well. Therefore, the issue of featurism can easily and eventually grow into the same severity as racism. Um, an example of this is like when white people say oh you went to that college oh you graduate you're so lucky oh that's your car is it leased is it financed you know when they the little you know like backhanded compliments also featurism can oftentimes transcend transcend colorism both in-house and outhouse um so um this article that i got i'm not gonna lie my computer has restarted a couple times i don't have the links anymore but you can literally type in featurism or featurism black america whatever and you will find all these links um and that's what they need the videos the texturism video or the colorism just google it and you will find it all right point one having a lighter skin complexion and still being black is considered gold oh and we can't forget how our own black men treat light-skinned women better than brown slash dark-skinned women light-skinned women are put on a high horse and are given major passes when it comes to typical features that men desire while brown to dark-skinned women are held held to a much higher standard such as having a straight or small nose having hicks and curves looking full and having manageable or attractive hair so even though black men quote unquote or quote appreciate unquote black women they hold us to a much higher standard than a light-skinned woman is held to and that says a lot of about some of the black men today in our or in our society um it is sad because black men are not only mirroring how slave owners treated brown skin women damn that's deep but they are also oppressing their own people making colorism and featurism cousins if not siblings real quick um real talk with yanni or yanni i'm not wish, wish, sure which way you pronounce it but um check out her channel um she's kind of like a paris milan queen choma type of channel um black women's issues um features and colorism all that other stuff um i was watching some of her videos earlier and one of the videos that she said resonated with me so much um when we're speaking about the black community not just black men but black women as well we're talking about the collective not the selective and I feel like with black men, they kind of want to play like, oh, I'm a special unicorn. It's not me. 
And the problem with that is, okay, that's not you, but are you calling out your peers who are exhibiting um, scenarios of misogynoir or colorism? You know, when they say, dang, she pretty for a dark skin chick, are you calling them out on that shit and saying, bro, that's not cool. That's not what we do. You are black. Nine times out of ten, it's coming from a fucking dark skin man. So, but I mean, nonetheless, that's a conversation, another conversation for another day. But for real, are you calling out your brothers when they or your peers when they're making these certain remarks or talking about black women in a certain way and women in general? But you know, black women, because um, this is black male accountability. But um, black women in a certain way, and you know, actually, let's not even include other women because y'all really only talk about black women like this. The same way that Kanye. Um, the black woman nicely asked or qu was questioning what he was saying on that stage. Excuse me. And he went off on her. Meanwhile, that white girl was snapping on his ass and he hugged her ass, which, I mean, look who he's with. So it doesn't surprise me. But nonetheless, um, yeah, we're speaking about the collective, not the selective. So if you are the quote unquote good black men, then you shouldn't be offended. And you should also be holding other people other black men accountable when they do shit it's not enough to sit by idly and say oh well it's not me so you know <laughs> i'm good no that's not what we want white people to do when they see our asses getting killed by policemen right that's what all this marching is for right okay then hold that same example in your community that's all people that's all we're saying that's all we're saying all right just wanted to put that in there real quick i really like how she worded that um next up Point number two, the black women that our society promotes don't look anything like the average black woman. The majority of them don't have predominantly African features, are light-skinned, or have got nose jobs to change their features to embody Eurocentria. So tell me, how am I and other black girls with Afrocentric features supposed to feel beautiful if our society keeps telling us we're not? Who are we supposed to look up to when our black women don't want to be black? Point three, facial features. So often an indicator of ethnicity alongside skin color can affirm or deviate from a set of standards of beauty. In many places around the world, America included, this beauty standard is set to a European ideal. Black women who have aspects of European features can be praised, but even in the moment towards greater diversity, women with traditional African features can feel left behind. Excuse me. Now, back to that initial question, are you mixed? This question particularly is problematic because of the assumption that beauty and blackness can only coexist when black features or traits are combined with typical European features, European features, <laughs> or the other features of other ethnic groups. Yes, colorism is a part of it, but it also says something about the features that people within the black community value. Similar to the way people say you can have good hair, meaning that you have loose curls, I've also heard people talk about having a good nose, meaning thinner and smaller. There's another side to it as well. How does it make sense that big lips were deemed unattractive on black women for a long time, but now we have women like the Kardashians paying to get the lips that many black women were born with? This is where featureism intertwines so closely with colorism. The Afrocentric features criticized when on black women are praised when on white women. So some examples of this are, number one would be Blue Ivy. Um, as I said in my textures and video, this girl has been picked apart from the day she came out of Beyonce's twat. It's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous, the shit that y'all took this girl through. And I'm not one to be like, oh, celebrities, I feel so bad. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to throw pity parties for celebrities, but that's a fucking child. That's a fucking child. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I mean, not to... I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. This community has got to do better. But she's been picked apart for her features compared to her father. He's also on this list, too. I mean, he doesn't get it as bad as her, which is ironic because the features come from him, partially. But, um, you know, there's all types of memes saying what they thought she would have looked like and what she came out to look like. And she's, you know, just her hair, her features have been a the topic of conversation since she's been born. So much that Beyonce had to shit on y'all real quick in formation. You know, she like her baby hair with baby hair and afros. She like her Negro nose with Jackson 5 nostrils. A lot of y'all was singing along, but uh, she was talking about your black ass. <laughs> all right. Next up would be Megan Thee Stallion. Um, ever since Megan's came out, like, featureism has just, it's not been her best friend. Um, she's gotten bullied for her nose, her, the fact that she's a tall woman, and 
this is where I want to call a lot of you black men out real quick. Because when we talk about colorism, y'all like to try to bring up heightism. But you see, when a girl's tall, then it's free game to make fun of her. But we can't talk about short niggas. Like, I don't understand. But that's another conversation for another day. I just... Oh, see, the thunder was feeling me. The thunder was feeling me. What's up? <laughs> but that's another conversation for another day. I just wanted to point that out real quick. Because niggas be quick to joke on Megan. Even today I saw Cameron repost a meme that basically implied that Megan was a tranny. Or a transsexual. Or transgender. Sorry, I don't know if we still say tranny. But um, transgender. To be politi- politically correct. Um, so she's just gotten it left and right. And it's so weird because, like... She to me she's sexy. That's an attractive ass woman. I don't I don't understand. A lot of you niggas just y'all hate blackness and it's very evident. Tiana Taylor was just right and Ari Lennox was right. They're also on this list. Um after the next one, which is Serena Williams. Serena Williams, oh my god, God bless Serena Williams. She has gotten picked apart from not only black men online, but white men online as well. Um her and her sister have taken a lot of hits for these black women, the up-and-coming black women behind them. As far as the tennis game goes, there's a lot of racism in the sport tennis. Oh, there's a lot of racism in America, period. <laughs> but there's a lot of racism that goes on there. Um, you know, Serena gets called foul, or gets not, well, gets called foul names, but also gets foul, like, I don't know the right term, but they call fouls for nothing on her. You know what I'm saying? Um, she'll get uh, a little mouthy with the uh, referee, and all of a sudden now she's got a strike against her or whatever. Or now she's lost the game. She's been through a lot. But, I mean, even off the court, she like people are constantly tearing apart her features. She goes through so much. And I realize that white media also plays a, a, a great hand in this, which is why we need to build our own media. So if we can't beat... Or not be, but if we can't, I mean, we can't get white media to stop, to stop pulling fuck shit, but we can at least build up our own media to combat shit like this. But, you know, all the articles of them drawing her as monkeys against Naomi um, Osaka, I think that's her name. Um, and then, you know, Naomi was loving it and she didn't have no problem speaking out. Oh, and Serena Williams have. Not that I expect her to do that because she is biracial. I don't even expect her to do it if she was full black. But she didn't have no problem speaking out for her. But you seen how they really felt about her ass the minute she dropped that coach. Because they was calling her the same derogatory names that was calling uh, Serena Williams. But there's another video from the topic. Um, I'm going to need her daddy to pay them coaches. That is trash. But at any rate, um, yeah, like I said, Serena Williams, she's been through a lot. And it didn't get much better for her as far as online black men are concerned with the hypocrisy of black women dating out versus black men dating out. As if Serena Williams would have been y'all's preference anyways. And as if Serena Williams didn't try to date black men. You know what I'm saying? She dated Common. I know that Drake's biracial, but let's keep it real. If y'all want to keep the girls as black who are biracial, well, then let's do it for the guys too. Drake is a black king. Boom. So she dated him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's tried. It just didn't work. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sick of... How you sit here and go in on dark-skinned women on one page but tell them to get self-esteem and validation and tell them it's not your job and then get mad when they go to other races for it? I, I don't understand that. I don't under, Y'all, some of the most laziest Negroes ever and just disgusting and mean and vile. But at any rate, um, that's that self-hate. It, it, it does a number. Next up, we have Ari Lennox and Tiana Taylor. We remember at the top of the year, I'm sure you do. Um, I'm sure you remember at the top of the year. Um, old lame ass, corny ass nigga on Twitter came out and compared them to um, pit bulls while saying they still have sex appeal. It's always the average and ugly ones. Like, I don't understand. Like, y'all niggas be looking like whole ass thumbs. You look like a thumb on somebody's hand. On the hand of like a coal miner or somebody who work hard with their hands. Like you should be thankful to, let me relax. We ain't trying to, let see, that's why that's my podcast name. Let me relax. But at any rate, um, he came for them 
or he put po- he posted that tweet um Ari said, y'all hate blackness so bad. Um, uh, Tiana Taylor basically blacked, bla- blacked her up. <laughs> backed her up. And, um, you know, Ari, I think she went live and discussed it later. But um, it's just sad. These two women are so talented. Ari repping for the dark skins. Tiana repping for the brown skins. Tiana Taylor's is, album is fucking amazing, y'all. Like, oh, my God. I think I, don't, I think I might have, like, every song except for maybe one or two. Y'all check out Tiana Taylor's album. Um... And I'm not sure if Ari Lennox has done anything new recently. Last song I seen that was new from her was the Busted song, so I might be a little behind. But both talented women. And I think we really just need to start giving our black artists their flowers while we're here, so financially supporting them. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are upset that Nick Cannon apologized to these white folks. But let's keep it real. Who you think is paying more of Nick Cannon bills? White people who run uh, as far as not run, but white, even white kids, they buy the most hip hop. Now, I don't know if they buy Nick Cannon music, but obviously white people are a big part of his bread and butter. So if black people don't have something to counteract him losing his job, how can you really get mad at him? You know what I'm saying? Now, I could be mad at him for his pro-black hypocrisy. And not even then, I'm not really mad because most of the pro-black quote unquote leaders are full of shit. You know what I'm saying? In one way or another, their life is hugely contradicting being pro-black. Um, we're not going to mention no names, but y'all know who they is. Hashtag pimping hoes. Hashtag when you going to get that school Probably bill. Never. Hashtag <clears throat> donations. Donations. <laughs> okay, let me, let me, let me, let me relax. relax. All right. But real quick, all I was saying was we need to love our own and um, support our own financially while they're here. And, you know, if you don't have nothing nice to say, then shut the fuck up. Maybe people said that too nicely when we was growing up. If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. A lot of y'all needed to be told that you just need to shut the fuck up. Like, especially these black men online. They, like, they be sound, some of y'all sound like straight up bitches. Not women, but bitches. Not girls, but bitches. You sound like the bitches on the playground who just bully the girls, bully other girls for no damn reason. Or the you can't sit with us bitches at lunch who was mean to the new girl for no damn reason. Like... That level of cattiness, y'all niggas really is effeminate. Yeah, I don't understand. But at any rate, these new age Negroes, I can't. Next up is Lil, ba- Lil Mama and actually Bow Wow as well. Um, these two, you know, people started making jokes um, or have always cracked jokes at their looks. Bow Wow, when he was younger, like there was, it was, it was so cringe. There was this one interviewer. Who he said, like, he called Bow Wow a pretty little girl. And the dude had to check him that that's a boy. It was so awkward. I could barely get through the whole thing. Like, one thing about me, I will watch, like, Blood in real life or some shit like that. Maybe I'm a serial killer. But I will watch, um, well, usually black people ain't serial killers. But I will watch, like, Blood or Gore before I watch something that makes me cringe. Like, if you try to propose to somebody publicly and I'm already getting the vibe they're going to say no, I will walk in the other direction and <laughs> be on my phone the whole time. Cause like, I just can't do cringe. I don't know what it is, but yeah, he called him a little girl. So that was awkward. And then y'all know little pe- people pick on little mama. And that's kind of an example where colorism transcends uh, or featureism transcends colorism. You know, she has those, like, I think she has the hazel or the green eyes and the light skin. However, her features are still very African or what people may consider as more rougher or masculine. You know what I'm saying? So they interchangeably get compared to each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, And you can also see how colorism plays effect because Bow Wow is light-skinned. And although he has the, you know, eyes that a lot of girls like, that didn't save his ass from getting compared to, you know, being effeminate either. You know what I'm saying? And I understand that he's done some other shit. Um... (laughs) that's made people turn him off but I'm just speaking in terms of how they're perceived feature wise and as far as colorism is concerned next up we have Michael Jackson and um his father is actually the culprit in um what I feel to be why he made such dramatic changes to himself now as far as the skin color I've seen people say he had vitiligo I've seen people say that the Pepsi commercial made his hair catch on fire and you I've heard all types of stuff about why Michael Jackson ended up light skin in the end but Regardless of how his skin got there, whether it's vitiligo or his personal choice, he still changed the features after the fact. You know what I'm saying? And his hair as well. Um, 
seeing that video of him, he actually talked about his father and how his father used to talk down on his black features. And that video, I ain't even gonna lie, that almost made me cry. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how Michael Jackson is. He got that soft voice. You know, it almost makes him seem like childlike. So, it, you know, him telling a sad story versus Morgan Freeman telling one is kind of going to hit a little different. At, <laughs> at any rate, next up on the list is Jay-Z. Um, I told y'all earlier he would make the list um, with his daughter, Blue Ivy. Um, I'm so glad Jay-Z is not a female. That would be so sad. Oh, my God. But um, he gets um, a lot of flack for his features, you know, so much as that Beyonce responded to it in formation. You know, she said she loved her Negro nose with Jackson 5 nostrils. Um, and, um, yeah, he's the cult, uh, uh, the victim of a lot of featureism. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. This meme that I'm about to cast up on the screen, it has me dying laughing all the time. Oh, we're not supposed to say dying. It has me strong laughing. Me and my friend, we're trying to stop saying dying and we weak. Cause you know, it's a whole pandemic going on and your words have power. But at any rate, that photo had me crying crying y'all it's funny as hell but we have to take accountability for that um now i don't know this to be 100 percent true although i could believe it because i just don't believe that girls are sitting on social media creating memes all day and oftentimes i actually i don't know if i'm the only one that does it but i go to the ads sometimes of the people who like post the memes or create the memes. And a lot of times the page looks like it is ran by either a male or a black male. It's the way that you phrase the captions. It's the way the bio is set up. The types of memes. You know what I'm saying? There's just certain memes. Black girls or black women or women in general. They might repost memes. But there's memes that you could just tell a nigga made this. Or a, a man made this. Not a woman. So um, a lot of us have to take accountability for that. You know what I'm saying? I, know, I saw some person earlier who was... Uh, once again, baby and all these damn black men. I'm sick of this coddling, but he was talking about the fact that we laugh at Will and um, we laughed at Will's mental state and all this other stuff. And when I watched the video with the Red Table Talk, I don't think Will was crying. I think he was just annoyed with talking about this. And like I said, I don't have a problem with being a little gentler with black people if the energy was reciprocated on both ends. Um the way that people are handling August and Will, if this was the other way around, y'all would not be handling the wife and the side chick like that. And another thing that people are not doing is they're not remembering that Jada did not cheat on Will. Jada and Will were separated when this happened. I don't care how strong her and August's bond was. I don't care about the fact that he was still chilling or he was with the kids at one point and chilling with them, grew up with them. That don't matter. They were separated. They were separated. If you say we separated, you do you, I do me. Uh, hey, I might just pop up with that female friend I had that was, uh, we've been friends for three years that I met out of school. You know what I'm saying? It might happen. It is what it is. There was no rules on who they could, you know, get with and not get with. And as a lot of black women pointed out, y'all made these memes, not us. We're just laughing. And I don't, I, I, I'm the type of person, I'm going to take out the bully before I take out the people who are laughing with the bully. Because if you take the bully out, ain't nobody got nothing to laugh at anymore. At least not as far as you are concerned. Hashtag whoop that hoe. So at any rate, um, also, if that feelings of reciprocity, um, if I saw the same people crying for Azealia Banks that I did, uh, if I had seen the same people crying for Vizilli Banks that are crying for Kanye West, then I would be a little bit more apt to cape for him. But I, I feel like a lot of the shit that he got going on is performative. Um, if y'all want a full video on that, you can let me know down below. But pretty much, without going into detail, I feel like a lot of his shit is performative. I do think he has bipolar. Um, bipolar, I don't know the correct term, but I do think he is bipolar. Um, however, or bipolar disorder, sorry, brain went numb. Um, but I do think he has bipolar disorder, but I think a lot of this is per, um, performative as, as well. So at any rate, going back to the next one on the list, sorry, y'all, I'm just, I have been on in a second. <laughs> um, Kodak Black, um, although it's hard to view him as a victim of featurism, um, even I, even I pointed out that, you know, probably half the world doesn't view Kodak Black as attractive. Let's just be honest. And, um, 
we can also go ahead and just lump Gilbert Arenas in there too because ain't no need to spend so much time on both of these people. But obviously, they don't like what they see in the mirror, so they take that out on the women who look similar to them or just like them. Um, so with that being said, now let's go into how this has affected black people in the long run. You First off, um, the special snowflake mentality um, you know, we see this when you have dark skinned women come out and say, oh, colorism is just in your head, you know, because maybe they have blue eyes or, you know, keener features, you know, and they're kind of speaking out of place and trying to gaslight and um, pretty much piss off dark skinned women and invalidate their experiences. Another uh, way that this has affected us is the way we attack each other. Like, if you think about it, all roast battles, and even if you're not roasting somebody, if you're really going into it, nine times out of 10, when black people go at it, it always starts with our features. Go look up some roast battles right now. I want you to Google or YouTube search roast battles and watch the first three. I guarantee you, you're going to hear your big face, nose ass, your forehead ass, all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? And I really just wasn't like, I ain't going to lie. I've sat down and watched some people going on each other. I done laughed. You know what I'm saying? But it gets to a point to where like, we really need to sit back and say, or peel back the onion a little bit more, you know, excuse me, Janelle Monet, she had talked about how hip hop is misogynistic and all this other stuff. DMX and Snoop Dogg were having their rap battle and she had spoke out and i'm sure she received some black a lot of black black well blacklash <laughs> um but backlash for what she said but she had spoke out and said um you know the hip-hop and or the misogynoir and hip-hop and the way they y'all can't wait to black call black women bitches and all this other stuff and i understand where the backlash can come from but black people like we really have to get serious we we don't take each other seriously we don't take a lot of shit seriously. And then we want people to conveniently take us seriously when we kind of want to pick and choose. Like, I can say that DMX, I have a lot, bruh. Let me go get my phone. All right. We all got our problematic phase. DMX, bring your whole crew coming for you. Make a move. Party up. Here we go again. We don't give a fuck. Run high. Duck, duck. We don't give a fuck. Okay. Let me relax. Flesh of my blood. Blood of my... I think they say blood. Look, it got the dot, dot, dot on it. I don't listen to that one as much. Dog intro, the rain, all I know, only. Okay, okay. Number 11, I'm a bang. Hit the, okay, let me, look, y'all, y'all, as y'all can tell, I fuck with DMX. But I'm not going to sit here and act like the music isn't a big part of why we're viewed as thugs in today's society. Like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Let's not lie. I'm a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So if I can admit it, I hope y'all can be honest with yourself. By the way, go get that rich thought. I'm, I'm just, just saying. saying. <clears throat> I'm a rich thought. Money over women, I'm a get wild. Yeah. Fucking on your wife and a been tied. Left with the keys like a piss thot. But with that being said, you know, my song is called Rich Thought. That ain't the most positive representation for the black community. You know what I'm saying? I, DMX is one of my favorite male art, um, male rap artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, I fuck with city girls. I don't put labels on shit. If I like the music, I like it. I'm not one of those black men who feel like I can't listen to black female rappers or female rappers in general. If they dope, they dope. It is what it is. Um, and a lot of them out rapping these niggas, you know what I'm saying? But, um, nonetheless, um, I, I, you know, I don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I like the fact that the city girls are brown skin and dark skin. That's good representation for unambiguous black women, you know, in their own way. Although it's, you know, through prostitution, they are kind of teaching women to be hypergamous, to know their worth, not just give your pussy, pussy away to the, you know, just anybody, you know what I'm saying? In their own way, you know? Um, so I, you know, I take the good with the bad, you know, DMX, he's like, you know, the male version of Mary J. Blige, you know, he bought the singing and the, um, pain rapping out. But with that being said, let's be honest. His, his rap shit is very violent. You know what I'm saying? It does advertise violence, gang violence. You know, we can't act like it doesn't. It's there. You know, if you want to enjoy it, that's fine, but don't be in delusion. If you want to keep your struggle love movies, that's cool. You can enjoy it, but know that it is struggle love. It is what it is. I'm sorry, y'all. We got really off topic a couple times. I'm trying not to make this video too long. This is what happens when I stay along, away too long, y'all. All right. Next up, another way this has affected black people in the long run is an imbalance in healthy promotion of all shades of black people, both men and women. And finally, the elevation of mixed biracials over actual black people. Um, now, I want to hone in. This is black male accountability, so let's hone in on how black men contribute to the problem. 
I am actually going to try to find this article because it was really interesting. But at any rate, at the top of the societal hierarchy is straight white men and some white women and black men both in their outward want for equality are, whether admittedly or not, inwardly, just trying to replace them at the top. And to do that, they have to behave as white men do, and neither really has a problem with doing so. Wondering how? Question mark. Black men have to deal with racism, but are able to leverage sexism and misogyny or misogynoir, which is misogyny directed at black women, to advance. White women have to deal with sexism, but can leverage racism in their climb to the top. Black men can use the exact same tactics and sentiments against black women that white men and women use against them. Respectability politics, stereotypes, victim blaming, etc. We see this with Megan Thee Stallion, not only with the whole Tory Lanez incident, you know, allegedly, <clears throat> but, um, you know, her twerking, just her persona in general. A lot of black men hate to see black women having fun. I don't understand. I can't relate. But at any rate, um... There's a reason why we have this saying, straight black men are the white people of black people. That's deep. If we refuse to hold people accountable for their inappropriate comments on others' natural unalterable features, we perpetuate the growth of futurism and in turn, we perpetuate racism. Cough, cough, <clears throat> Lil Wayne, <coughs> 50 Cent. <clears throat> Cut out all the backhanded compliments. That's another way. All this, you're pretty for a dark-skinned chick. That shit is, like, tired. Come on now, black people. We need to do better. All these light-skinned versus dark-skinned people on fucking YouTube. This shit is whack, y'all. This shit is whack. And you're not fixing the problem as a grown-ass adult, and it's trickling down to your kids. Because a lot of these men that's doing that, there are kids in high school doing that light-skinned versus dark-skinned shit. And it's just fucking cringe. But at any rate, solutions. On to the solutions. Knowing about futurism and self-researching can help to further prevent the microaggressions that come along with it. Futurism should be addressed and explained when recognized. In closing, toxic behavioral traits like this can affect anyone in our community, and the children of today already have enough trauma going on dealing with white supremacy and police brutality, aka cold-blooded murder. Let's not add on to that pain by continuing these cycles of self-hatred. All right, so that ends most of the isms that I wanted to cover as far as featureism, colorism, and texturism. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Sorry this video was so damn long, but your boy just, he ain't been, he ain't been recording like a week. So I had some shit to say. Had to get out some shit on the sidelines here and there. But y'all let me know what y'all think down below. If there's any topics y'all do want me to cover, let me know down below. And I will get back to y'all on the next video. Peace.